Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to making more 3D Zelda-like wizard games and game maker. Last time I implemented uh, collectibles, so things like, um, you know, currency items that you can find on the ground, as well as collectible cards, a uh, bare bones collectible card system, because uh, having things that you can uh, search for and collect in the game world is sometimes kind of fun. And uh, today I'm going to be changing gears just a little bit, and I think uh, I said today I would be working on a uh, basic quest system of sorts. Because while we're on the subject of, uh, of inventories, quests are uh, in a sense an item that you can put in an inventory. So, um, let's see. I, um, I'm going to go and create myself another, another uh, script of code down here. And I think I'll call that um, group underscore quest. Similar nomenclature to a uh, bunch of my other um, miscellaneous code files. And we're going to need our quest system to, uh, well, one, contain a, a list of all the quests in the game. And um, did I... All right, I, I thought I, I did something like this for a uh, card. So I'm going to do something similar to this for quests. Um, let's say quest db is what we can call this... Uh, this macro, and uh, that can be named appropriately. And instead of having a, like, collectible card data, we can say quest data, uh, a name, an ID of sorts. Don't think a sprite really needs to go with that, and a description is fine. Apparently, last time I copied and pasted a line and forgot to change a word. That's okay. So... Some quest systems in games, particularly RPGs, can be big and elaborate and contain like multiple, like, multiple routes for completion or contain like a listener um, that runs in the background and checks to see when you've met a criteria automatically. I'm not going to do anything fancy like that. Uh, our, quest our quest system is simply going to be a name, an ID, and a description. Uh, and when we get to the, uh, the player keeping track of their game state, we're going to essentially just keep track of different IDs and whether or not they have been completed, whether they're active or completed. Um, again, this is a lot like what I, um, what I did for like keeping track of gameplay progression quest system in, uh, in Wizard Ducks, but I think for this game, I will uh, simplify even further than, than I did in that game, and we'll just, we'll just go with these three uh, values and the completion state. So I need, a, uh, I need an example quest, so we can do something like, oh, uh, what would be a good one? I don't want to do like 10, 10 bear asses or whatever the, uh, the trope is. Or do I? Um, let's say new quest data. We can call this one cheese. The, uh, the internal ID can be cheese. Uh, no sprite, as we said, and then uh, the description can be something like I... I like cheese. Okay. And I guess I'll, uh, I'll add another one. I did kind of like to have multiple, um, like, test subjects, test items like this uh, when I'm setting something up like this, because um, on the off chance that I do something really dumb and, like, hard code a system to only work with one item, I, I'd like to find that out earlier um, rather than later. What would be a, a second good one? All right, so those will be our two uh, our two test quests, and then uh, of course later on in the game when I need to, I can access these by saying something like quest db dot dot cheese or quest db dot door or something like that, and um, and that'll be that. Um, I did say that uh, completion state. Like uh. There's probably only going to be, for example, not started, not started, started, and completed, and if a quest is not started, it won't even be in, like, the player's quest inventory log thing, so you really could just get away with uh, having the quest state be, like, a boolean, but, um, I'll attach it to, uh, to this enum instead, just, um, just because I can. Uh, let me go... Uh, I have too many repositories. Alright, I'll commit those changes, and then I will, um... Go into the game state class, uh, say... We can, um... 
do something that's a lot like our like our known spells inventory or our cards inventory. Um, should this be a struct or an array? I was going to make it a struct, so it's just a, a dictionary mapping one value onto another. Um, spells are in an array. You know what, that's fine. I can just leave them unordered and leave the, uh, let the game figure out later how to order them. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll say add card, add quest, uh, remove quest. Um, removing a quest isn't something that you're likely to do very often. Uh, instead of saying has quest, we can say has completed quest. Uh, we can also say has started quest. <clears throat> By the way, if you're really into like having different quest outcomes, you could easily add another state that's like started, completed, or failed if if it's possible to fail a quest. I'm not planning on going that far, but um, actually, you know, instead of saying uh, add quest, I'll say start quest and uh, complete quest. And um, I think that'll be our distinction, right? So I just need to update all these variable names because there's a, there's quite a lot of them. Now I've written the word quest so many times that it doesn't look like a word anymore. Instead of just going with uh, with true or false, uh, I want to say oh you know what I should probably say like if variable struct exists. Uh, when I do that as well, because for cards it doesn't matter if you had, like add the same card twice, but in this case I wouldn't want to override if you completed a quest and accidentally started again I wouldn't want to like uncomplete the quest because that doesn't make sense um, What did I call it? Equest states dot uh, started uh, When we say complete quest we can say dot completed and that'll that'll be fine. We don't have to check for that one or not. Hey. Actually, we probably should because it would it would likewise be a little weird if you could complete a quest that you haven't started yet. All right. Remove quest. That's fine. Uh, has started quest. I think I will specifically make started the like started but not completed distinction. Um, so we can say if uh, If this value equals equals um, equest states dot started, um, and completed can be equest states dot completed, and this will be how we access the quests in the game. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? I don't think there is. All right. So I can um. I can commit this change. And I don't know why I assigned this like five effort points, because I I feel like that wasn't that much. Let's let's make that a little more realistic. I might have been expecting this to be a little bit more and then thought better of it uh, early on when I uh, when I was planning this out. But uh, we have a, a basic quest system. We have uh, methods to start, complete, and end. Um, well, start, complete, and, and otherwise set the status of a quest. Uh, we can mark that as completed. And the, the list of active completed quests really ended up being the same thing. Um, so that's fine. I don't have like a really good in-game way to test this now. Um, I don't have a... Like, I can't talk to any NPCs or anything like that yet and get them to, to launch a quest or anything of the sort. Um, I'll obviously get around to doing a lot more with that later later on. Um, probably around, like, here. One of these two uh, milestones. Anyway. All right, as you can probably tell, I've, I've still got some of that cold from last week, and I probably don't sound great, uh, but I've only been doing this for a little more than 10 minutes today, so it's probably okay if I do a little more. Um, I could knock this off. I could also, like, create a some kind of save and load uh, thing for... Um, 
Okay, you know what? I I won't I won't hand those now or I won't do them now anyway, but I'll um I'll move that to to this sprint also. So I'll probably do that like next video or in the uh the cleanup phase at the end of this milestone or something like that. Uh, what I will do is I'll make treasure chests expel their contents. <clears throat> All right. Um, so uh, treasure chests, do uh, do those have a list of contents yet? I don't remember. Um, where's, uh, where's gameplay 3D objects? Um, treasure chests, do you have a list of uh, contents yet? Um, Okay, we have an expel contents method. Uh, we don't yet have a list of contents defined, right? So I'm going to say self.contents is going to equal an array. And actually, that could be a variable definition. Uh, if I set that to an expression, and initialize that to empty array. Then um, then I can set that, like if I was using the room editor, I could set that in the room editor in a variable definitions window, or if um, if you're using the instance create function, you could pass that as a parameter. So the first thing that I'll need is like, what exactly is going to be in the contents array, right? Um, it's probably going to be something in the in the form of like, uh, a struct containing like type can be uh, like obj underscore three d pickup card or something like that, um, like this, and like um, how do you differentiate these from each other? Like the card ID can be um, can be some card ID, and if there's a if it's just like a, a commodity, like a currency or a heart pickup or something like that, um, data might just be zero. Otherwise, uh, in the case of like a card, that, that data might be the, um, the card ID. Or you know what, even better. Um, all right, it's just, it's just called that. Um, the data can be a, a another struct, like a uh, an inner struct. Uh, which will literally be passed to the uh, to the instance create function here. And now when we expel our contents, um, Let's see, I can say content is going to be uh, the element in the array, um, instance create depth, uh, uh, the object can be content.type, that's the, uh, the object, the object reference, and the, um, the parameters will be content.data. Uh, and uh, we will obviously need to, to keep track of that. Actually, we'll, we will not really, but we will need to like set the set the motion through the air of a pickup so that it like you know flies out of the chest instead of just spawning on the ground. But I'll start with this, and um, first we'll make sure that that card is actually being spawned, and. When we um when we are when we enter our open state, we expel our contents. Okay, that's great. So, uh, basically, what what should happen as a result of this is that uh, when I when I open this, um nothing nothing was spawned. All right, that's fun. Uh, where did you go? Oh, you know what it is. Okay, that's actually very funny. It's not funny, but it's it is funny. Is that um I. I wrote some code to do something similar to that when I was loading these things from the map, from the map file, from the Unity file, and um, 
Yeah, since I decided to go with the same variable name, uh, it will be it will be overwritten, and um, like at some point, ultimately it's gonna need to do something along these lines anyway, right? Uh, it's gonna need to um. I can't just like skip out on reading the file from the file or anything like that. Otherwise, everything will break. All right, so that spawned a um, that spawned a card at the chest position, barely. So if I were to um, if I were to return to where to where I was, um, <clears throat> uh, one, as I said, it would probably be a good idea for these things to update their collision positions when they're created, right? And then, like, we wouldn't have to. Uh, secondly, let me go into the. Um, let me go into Penguin. And. Chest. Let me go into Penguin and define, like. Uh, that is. Oh, hang on. Reset transformation. Um, let me go into Penguin and define like a little, little attach point. Alright, I'm gonna make the, the spawn point like that little dot in the middle of the chest over here, right? Okay, so save the wizard school project, let's re-export all. And we can be on our merry way. Um... What is the, uh, the code for getting the, uh, okay, so the position is, I can just do array search with name on the collision shapes and then search for the name. Um, like this, and then add the, Add the spawns uh, X, Y, Z. Like this to, um, to the chest position when we spawn. And that will actually create the, uh, the thing in the middle of the chest, which is probably what we want. All right. And uh, lastly, let's see, should we, uh, Make a commit in the middle of there. Uh, lastly, I'm going to want these to move through the air, and I'm going to want them to stop when they hit the floor. Let's see, we can do that by... Why do pickups have a roll in all directions property? Did I just like clone that from something else? I, I must have cloned that from something else, right? I can get rid of that, right? Um, and say x speed y speed and z speed as uh as we often do with things like this um i'm not going to go and give pickups a state i'm not going to have them like soar through the air or anything like that but i will say uh let's i i totally just opened a bunch of things um Let's see, let's, uh, let's just uh, override the begin step event and say uh, if, we, if our speed is greater than zero, so if we are moving can we, um, can we check a ray, do a ray cast in our, in our direction? Um,
so we can check a ray against like solid objects or something, right? Uh, what are the collision groups? Uh, collision masks dot default. Um, gonna wanna gonna wanna check for the ray hit. If ray hit is not equal to undefined and ray hit dot distance. Uh, Actually, this should be right hit that distance is like less than or equal to that, right? So if we hit something with a ray cast, then I'll probably do more like a sphere cast instead so that the cards don't like bounce into the walls before stopping and then, and then like bounce out of the walls. And then anyway, either way, after we move, Uh, we'll need to if we if we don't hit something, we'll need to update our um, actual position, um, and then we'll update the collision position, right? Um, Chests have a direction, right? And then that's gonna need that's gonna be X and Z. And that's gonna that's gonna call for a uh little little delta time. Like that. And multiply by our time step. This is another one of those like delta time with gravity things. I'm really gonna have to get off my lazy butt and do that properly later, but um, okay, so uh, you are not moving actually. Did I, uh, did I make that way too complicated for the first attempt? I probably did, right? Okay, you know what? It'll probably make my life a lot easier if I make this a little bit simpler, right? So, firstly, um, instead of doing any crazy uh, states or any crazy, like, checking to see what our velocity is or anything like that, um, we can uh, we can say is moving to false, and then if, uh, if is moving, we can do all this, and then... Uh, if we hit something, we can set that back to false. Uh, when we spawn something, which is kind of the only case in which this will, um, in, case, in which case a collectible will be, like, thrown through through the air, uh, spawn dot is moving is true. All right, so we'll, um, we'll check that first. Um, I don't have, like, a super nice way of excluding a particular object only from, um, from collisions, but my, uh, my hypothesis here is that this is acting weird because, um, the game is, is thinking that we are hitting the object that spawned us, um, which I don't really want. Let me just like move this down to the bottom because it's bothering me. And um, <clears throat> and no, I won't. It's um, it's zeroed out up here. And even even if these values aren't going to be used once we stop moving, I'd still rather that stay at zero. Um, We can keep track of the object that spawned us. Like that. And uh, we can do that thing that I hate, but it's sometimes the, the least awful way to do things, uh, which is 
uh, if if we respond by a parent object, um, so the treasure chest. I forget this in every single video, but do you have just one or multiple? Um, Objects, or right, you have multiple, possibly. Oh, you know what I can do? I can just uh, iterate over every every collision object and remove it until we're done. That might be a better way of like deactivating. Um, there we go. Okay. And then it keeps going through the ground. All right. That's a that's a less stupid way of doing whatever I was doing earlier. Okay. Uh. Also, it popped out the side because when the box isn't rotated, it's um, it's still it's still like pointing south, right? Oh, it's not direction. It's the rotation matrix that we're storing. Oh, it's both. Okay. That um. That does make things easier than having to deal with the rotation matrix. Still though, so what I kind of want to do is um, check for a horizontal motion and a vertical motion separately. So if I say obj game collision call ray, uh, check ray rather, um, I can one, only do this with um with x and z motion and uh let's move that um like reparenting thing down there i can only do that with x and z motion uh two i can uh do another one of these of these check rays over here uh, except this time only with motion on the y-axis, uh, like that, or even, um, skip the, the normalization step. And I can do, um, uh, I can kind of break the, the two bits of logic in this check into two parts. So if ray hit is not equal undefined, if the hit distance is less than the, um, value of our y speed times um, delta time, um, we can say uh, self dot y equals the hit point y, we can zero out our y speed and we can set moving to false, else we can update our y speed. Um, up here, we will not actually set moving to false if we hit something uh, like that. Uh, the the y term in that point distance can be zero, and uh, there we can we can remove that y speed. Uh, it's kind of a we we can now reduce this down to a two D point distance instead of a three D one. Uh, because uh, one of those terms is, is zero. Uh, now, however, let's see if we can have something bouncing out of the chest in a satisfactory way. All right. Um, you went the wrong way, and then you continued falling through the floor. Um, I don't actually have floor geometry, although I will eventually.
So I don't feel bad about doing that special check there. Um, other than that, it looked like it was behaving. Now gravity is too intense. And um, let's reverse that direction. Okay. So that's uh, that's expelling a chest contents. If you are familiar with the uh, Oh, I can't do that, can I? Uh, if you're familiar with the Potter games, the things tend to fly out of treasure chests in a somewhat, a little bit of a random uh, direction and speed. So we can say uh, something like H speed equals a random range from, let's say, 56 to 68. Uh, averaging 64 of our VSP is going to equal a random range from, say, 100 to 128, averaging 112 of our dir is going to be um, random range self.direction. Um, let's say minus 30 to plus 30 plus self.direction minus 270. Um, and then I can sub in all these values. And if I were to have, for example, multiple things flying out of a treasure chest, um, if I wanted to, and this is going to be a little, little much to have in this little tiny box here, but if I had like four cards um, in my contents array, then they should all fly out in random directions. All right, that's fine. Um, obviously, uh, having, having four cards in one treasure chest is probably a little crazy. Uh, it's probably going to be at most be like a card, a health pickup and like a couple currencies or something like that, but it's good to know that it works. Um, also, uh, in a lot of the Potter games, the items will pop out one by one and not all at the same time. Uh, I could do that. I think, um, Wizard X has them pop out one by one every couple of frames, but... Um, I think that's, I think this is good enough for a, uh, somewhat more simple game like this. Alright. And, um, also, if something, if one of these cards hits a wall, it'll just, like, hit the wall and fall to the ground like a stone, it won't bounce. Um, just thought I'd mention that. Uh, I meant to open up the, uh, the codex board and say that, uh, chests can expel collectibles. I did not get around to, oh, wait, not in the hand. All right, I did not get around to doing the health pickups because that took a little longer than I thought, but we should be, um, we should be okay. Uh, next time I'm going to do some miscellaneous cleanup. I'm going to, uh, try and finish off the game state and, in in game state and inventory. I'll, uh, I guess I'll add a health stat to the, to the player state, um, and create a health pickup item just for fun. I'll create a save serialization system and save loading system for the player for their inventory and whatever, just for fun. And I can't imagine either of those things will take too long, so I'll also um, uh, round off the uh, game state and inventory milestone while I'm there. And then I'll do, um, I'll spend a little while doing these other interactions like uh, pressure plates and anything else I can think of between now and then. And uh, after that we're off to NPCs and characters, so that's gonna be, that'll be great. So. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Anyway, uh, look for the GitHub repository down there. Uh, look for the 0 0.36 release. That's going to be what got done in this video. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. One, let's make a game like this, and one tutorial tutorial. I like to focus on the weird 3D things you can do in Game Maker, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. 
Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.